Have you ever wondered how your choice in stove that you're taking on a hike can make or break potentially your hiking expedition? Today, I am diving deep into the Soto Windmaster stove, this thing. It's a lightweight champion, and we're also gonna be comparing it with the Jetboil Minimo, this thing. Which one will fuel your adventure without weighing you down and without leaving you cold and hungry while you're out in the middle of a trip. Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back everyone, Mauser here. Now, whether you're a seasoned hiker or planning your first overnight walk into the wilderness, the gear you carry is crucial. Well, that's what I say anyway. And today we are focusing on a piece of gear that's essential for any successful expedition. Your stove, unless you like cold soaked meals and you're doing that sort of thing, I guess. But it's, it's essential for most expeditions. I've put the Soto Windmaster to a test on a recent nine day expedition into the Tasmanian wilderness. And on that trip, there were four of us. We took two stoves, we took a jet boil, and we took a Soto Windmaster. And it gave me a really good chance to compare the two and see how they fared in performance throughout the trip. I've also done some more testing since I've been home and I think you might be surprised at what I discovered. Well, at least I was anyway, so maybe you will be too. So yeah, let's, um, let's get into it. I've just returned from this trip and I wanted to compare these two stoves in this video and just tell you how they have performed. So first up, we've got the Soto Windmaster stove. Now the Soto Windmaster, it's a popular stove these days and it's known for its lightweight form factor. Is that what you say? Form factor. And it's also well known for its performance in windy conditions. And when you pair it with something like my ever new 1.3 litre titanium pot, the whole setup is a minimalist lightweight hiker's dream at 217 grams, excluding fuel. Now we're gonna be comparing it to this thing, the Jetboil Minimo one litre stove. Now it's a bit heavier at 415 grams, excluding fuel, which is a difference of this much compared to the Soto Windmaster. It's been my go-to stove for reliability and fuel efficiency over the last four years, especially on those longer treks. So how have I tested the two stoves? Well, on my latest nine day trip, the Soto was my primary stove that I used with my mate. So we generally on these trips use one stove between two people. This was a four person trip, so we carried two stoves. And on this trip, our primary stove was the Soto. All up, I've used this for approximately two weeks of hiking. So far, that was a nine day trip and I've used it a few other times as well, but I now think it's had enough time to give it a good test. And historically with the Jet Boil, we have never ever needed to use more than one of these, the total weight of 374 grams, which is 227 grams of fuel. I use the MSR brand, but any brand will do. We have found generally with the Minimo on an eight or nine day trip, we never need more than one of these canisters between two people. We do always take it back up, but we've never had to crack into that second canister. And before we go much further, well, you might ask, well, how often am I using the stove? What am I cooking? That sort of thing. Well, generally with both these stoves and this latest expedition, it was a bit like this. It was between two people, each stove. I would generally don't hesitate to boil water. I boil it whenever I want a drink, whenever I need it. And generally that consists of sort of two boils in the morning of around probably seven to 800 mils of water in the morning. That's for two people. It's enough for a cup of coffee. Then we'll do it a second boil in the morning for our breakfast. So two boils in the morning every single day. And then we generally might use it at one or two lunches for the trip, maybe. Then in addition to that, of an evening, it will probably get boiled when we get in the camp once for a hot drink, then again for another hot drink a bit later. So that's two boils. We'll then use it for dinner. That's three boils. And generally we may or may not have one more boil that night for one more hot drink, but it's three or four boils at night, two in the morning and some other intermittent ones throughout the trip, maybe. So that's say six or seven boils a day of water. And it's normally around 800 mils of water with each stove. I generally just boil the water and that's it, turn the stove off, or I'll get it to just before boiling and turn it off. All my meals are freeze dried, dehydrated, and I soak them in the hot water. I'm not simmering stuff, I'm not cooking stuff generally on a longer trip, on a shorter trip maybe, but never on these long expeditions am I doing that sort of thing. So on this trip, that is how we use the stove. And well, how did they perform? Well, they both boil water really well. That's their main purpose. While we were out in the track, we found that maybe the Windmaster boiled a little bit slower than the Jet Boil. It did seem to take a while. I do know on our last night, we timed it and it was around seven and a half minutes to boil a pot of this water. It was full, it had about a litre in it. That's a 1.3 litre 
pot by Avenue Titanium with the lid on. Bit of a flimsy lid, air does get out, but to ball it was about seven minutes in that last night. Jet ball was a little bit quicker. We're at a bit of altitude at about 13 or 1400 meters. But yeah, that was a little disappointing. But we, we got out on the trip at the start of the trip and started using the stoves and we found that the Windmaster tended to go through the fuel a bit quicker. Now, when I use these stoves, I generally put the pot of water on and regardless of the stove, I will turn the burner up absolutely full, 100% to get it boiling as quick as possible because that's just what I've always done. That's never been a, an issue with fuel, that sort of thing. But we found on this trip, the Soto was starting to go through the fuel very quickly. And even on day two, when I felt the canister, it was already feeling emptier than this one, which is new, but it felt around half full after, you know, a day and a half's walking. And generally that first day, it was a bit windy. We cooked inside the vestibule of the tent a couple of times. We cooked outside the first lunchtime, but I was a bit concerned on day two about the amount of fuel that this stove was going through. And after three days, well, the canister was pretty much gone. I think we got through to day four breakfast, canister gone empty and we were cracking into our second canister already on a nine day expedition and we continued on stove seemed to be going okay with the second cylinder then we got to day eight the second last day there was the last evening and wouldn't you know it the second canister emptied on day eight and generally on these trips between two people we will take two canisters well, because with the jet balls, we've never had to crack into the second canister. It's always there just as an emergency backup if we need it. And on day eight, we had run out of gas between the two of us completely. Luckily, our other buddies, they had their spare canister still because the jet ball was still going on its first canister. So we had to crack into a third canister on day eight of this trip on the last night and then for the last breakfast, we had to crack into this last canister of fuel, of gas. So as you can imagine, I was a little disappointed with the way it was cranking through the fuel. So what are we thinking when I, when I analyze all this stuff, what am I thinking? Well, I got home and I thought, I've got to test these out a bit better. So I've run some tests. Let's have a quick look at them now. So to test the stoves, here is what I have done. For each test, I've used 750 milliliters of water, this much. Now, I know a lot of tests use one liter, other online YouTube channels, blogs, whatever, use one liter. Why have I used 750 mils? Well, generally, that's about what we would need when we make two drinks or reconstitute two freeze-dried meals. So that's about what we'd use normally per boil on the track. Also, the Minimo has a one liter pot. If you fill this thing with one liter of water, it just is brimming right on the top, so it's not practical. It's not something you normally do. In the jet ball, you'd also be bit normally boiling around 750 milliliters of water. So yeah, generally, that's about the amount of water we would need with two hot drinks or two mils. So for each test, I weighed out 750 mils, 750 grams of water each time for each boil. We would uh, put it in the jug, tip it into the pot, and then proceed with the test. And the first test we did was with the Minimo. So the Minimo system itself with both the Minimo burner and the Minimo integrated pot, which latches onto the burner. So for all these tests, uh, you will notice I didn't put the lid on for any of the boils for this test. Why you ask? Well, I wanted to be able to see exactly when the water boiled. I didn't want a lid impeding my vision. So I kept the lid off. Uh, so it was the same through all the tests. And in this first test, the Jetball Minimo took three minutes and 25 seconds to boil 750 milliliters of water. And to do that, it used six grams of fuel. So we weighed the fuel as well before and after each test. And for this one, six grams of fuel. In the second test we did, I have used the Jetboil Minimo stove again with the pot support that attaches to the top of the burner. So I've done that and I've used the Evernew titanium pot that I took on my recent hike with me. I've used that with 750 mils of water in it. And the results of this test, they're in as well. For that test, it took four minutes and 49 seconds for the 750 mil of water to boil. So nearly a minute and a half longer than the first test with the same burner, different pot. And I suspect that difference in time is due to the gap between the burner and the pot. It's quite a bit bigger than you would have with the integrated Minimo pot. And for this test, it used 10 grams of fuel. So significantly more fuel 
to boil the same amount of water with a different pot, six grams versus 10 grams for this test. So already when you're not using the integrated pot, we're seeing quite a difference in fuel consumption. Now, the final test we did was with the stove of the hour, so to speak, the Soto Windmaster. And for this test, I used my Evernew pot again. So this is the setup I had out on my recent nine day trip. I had the Evernew pot with the Windmaster stove. And well, how did the Windmaster go this time? Remember, no lid on the pot, it took two minutes and 45 seconds for the Windmaster to boil that 750 mils of water. So that's 40 seconds faster than the Minimo with the Minimo pot. So in these controlled conditions with no wind, with nothing, the Soto did boil quicker. However, how much fuel did the Windmaster use to boil that amount of water? Well, it used 10 grams of water again, same as the Minimo did with the Avenue pot. It has used the exact same amount of fuel, 10 grams. And remember that the Minimo with the integrated Minimo pot only used six grams of fuel. And that is nearly double the amount of fuel. It's quite a bit more. And if you do the sums, that's, you know, it's four grams of fuel more per boil. And if we're doing say six boils a day, that is 24 grams of fuel more a day. And over a nine or 10 day, that is at least another canister of fuel compared to the Minimo. And that is before you take into account things like wind, stuff like that. And on that note, I do personally think from our recent trip, think that the wind master, the Soto wind master is more affected by wind than the Minimo. I mean, the Minimo is an enclosed system. It is an enclosed system, but it locks in. You can see there from the baffles, that sort of thing in there that it's got, it's got that patented system. There is still a bit of a gap between the burner and the pot, but compared to something like the Windmaster, where you've got it sitting on the pot, you've got the pot sitting on the burner, wind blows through there quite easily. I did notice that on the trip, that wind would affect it a little bit. That's my personal experience. So to sum up those tests, let's just put them up on the screen now so you can sort of visualize the result. So you can see with test one, the Minimo and the Minimo pot, nearly three and a half minutes to boil, 750 mils of water, and it used six grams of fuel. Test two, the jet ball stove with the pot attachment ring and the Evernew titanium pot. Well, it's four minutes and 49 seconds. So that was the longest time and that used 10 grams of fuel. And then with the combo with the Soto Windmaster and the Evernew pot, the combination I took on this trip, it was two minutes and 45 seconds, but it used 10 grams of fuel. So that is a significant difference in fuel consumption and that is under controlled conditions, no wind or anything. And I know there are lots of other tests and reviews of this online, testing it in similar conditions. And while I haven't tested it in windy conditions for these specific tests, I have had both stoves out on a trip for the nine days on this recent trip. And I think that is a very good proving ground to compare the two side by side. And I have spoken to the guys in the course of making this video, I've spoken to the guys that came on the trip with me. We've had a bit of a heated discussion about the Windmaster. I was initially sort of backing up the Windmaster saying, look, it burned quicker, it's a more powerful burner. But the fact of the matter is, we went on this trip, we used over two canisters of fuel for the Windmaster, two of these, well, two and a bit. We ran out of fuel on day eight. We had to crack into a third canister on the dinner for day eight and for breakfast on day nine. Whereas the other two guys, they had the Minimo, they took the Minimo, they went through not even one of these canisters. They still had fuel left in the initial canister they used at the end of nine days. And they were using the stove the same amount, if not more than us. They were boiling just as much water, having all the same food, all the same stuff as us using the Minimo and went through so much less fuel. So where does that leave us? Well, I've got to say, the Minimo is going to be coming on all those long expeditions with me for sure. But I'm not going to give up on the Windmaster altogether. I would still take that on a shorter trip where I'm going to use a canister or less. So maybe for two or three days, I would take the Windmaster, but I wouldn't be taking it on anything longer than three nights. No way. It's just not worth it when I've got to carry extra fuel when I know I can take the Minimo and one canister, I can safely go on a trip for say six days with one canister of fuel. Whereas on a similar trip for six days, seven days with the Windmaster, I would be wanting to take at least two canisters, probably three to be on the safe side, given my experiences so far with this thing. But I'm, I'm hearing the queries, I'm hearing the queries. Mauser, all the online blogs and websites, they're saying the Windmaster's the bomb. It's the best dive out there. It's the lightest one. It's the, got the best things going for it. So I did have a look online and here's what we found. So one place I always go to for reviews is outdoorgearlab.com and they have a review on lightweight stoves and they actually do compare the Jetball Minimo to the Soto Windmaster on their website. Link is below for this and this is their six best 
backpacking stoves updated in 2023 uh, November and here they go through the stoves and they rate the Soto Windmaster as the editor's choice for this review so that is the one they that's sort of their pick of the bunch of the six stoves they've tested here uh, let's have a quick look at what they say lightweight works in the wind great piezo igniter fuel efficient very stable small canister stove our favorite small canister stove providing the best performance for most backpackers whereas the jet bowl they say it's a great system for backpackers and alpine climbers relying on dehydrated simple meals and that that's absolutely true the windmaster probably has slightly better simmer control if you're getting fancy you're doing fancier meals the simmer control on this would be a little bit better if you've got a bigger pot obviously with the jet boil if you're not using that pot you need to use the pot support and use a bigger pot your fuel efficiency then is going to go down a bit but for these big expeditions we only need this we need boiled water for freeze-dried meals we're not going crazy on these long trips and that's specifically what i'm talking about here in this review and overall the outdoor gear lab review they give uh its various aspects a score out of 10 here with fuel efficiency they give the windmaster an 8 out of 10 whereas the minimo they give a 10 out of 10 in fuel efficiency so they've found the same thing that the windmaster isn't as efficient with the fuel as it's the jet boil they give the weight of the soto a 7 out of 10 whereas they give the jet ball a 4 out of 10 now i don't know what sort of trips i couldn't see anything about the length of trips they're using this for but i'd have to disagree with a 4 out of 10 i'd probably give the jet ball 5 or 6 out of 10 in terms of weight i mean it is almost twice the weight of the soto system but if you're going for more than four days you need to take extra ones of these for the Soto, which brings it up on par with the weight of this with one canister. It's getting pretty close. So take that for what you will. And again, with the boil time, they found they were very similar. They gave the Windmaster seven out of 10 and the Jet Ball eight out of 10. So not a huge difference there. Similar sort of results to mine. And then overall, they've given the Windmaster, they've given this thing uh, the editor's choice. They have given the Jet Boil a top pick award. Now I would normally, if I'm scanning these reviews, I'd be looking at both of those options but the editor's choice does tend to sway me a bit but in this case i probably i would go with that over that in a heartbeat now also i know some people will use a shroud around the windmaster stove they will get a bit of titanium foil or something like that like you get on the old msr stoves to protect it from the wind I didn't want to do that. I, I didn't buy a stove without that that didn't come with that already. I didn't want to have to add that in, if you know what I mean. Like it's meant to perform as is and I didn't see the need to do that. I don't want to have to do that. I want it just to work the way it comes, uh, which is what I get with the Minimo. So there's that as well. So what would I give it for my editor's choice, for the Mauser's choice? Well, I'd give it to the Minimo. That's probably clear by now. So my overall opinion, well, in case you haven't guessed it, I'm a Minimo boy. I'm a jet ball boil boy. I'm a jet boil boy. I'm not a Soto Windmaster guy. I am going to give it another chance so I will take it on shorter trips and keep testing it. And if you're in the market for a stove, unless you're doing these gourmet meals where you got to, you know, you got to cook for a while, you got to stir, you got to get some fine simmer control. If you just want to boil water for freeze dried, rehydrated meals, hot drinks, that sort of thing, I'd take this thing every time. So there you have it. I'd be interested to hear your opinion. Have you had both these stoves? Have you tried them both out? It's a lot of love for the Windmaster. None of my mates like it. They're actually, I'm getting teased a bit about having the Windmaster now and trying to, you know, back it up there, but it was worth a try. I'm going to have another go with it, but this one, I'm going on a walk this weekend with the kids. We're going to be taking the jet boil. Let me know what you think. Leave comments below, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and check out this review I did last year where I just lined up a whole bunch of stoves and gave my favorite one out of all them. A quick, quick result. I think it was this one again. <laughs> anyway, check that one out. I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.